We all know G4 is really hard to use if you're not familiar with it, and it's kind of frustrating to get familiar with. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use G4 to figure out what page views each blog post on your website is getting and to figure out where those people are coming from. Now, by where those people are coming from, I mean in two different ways. What their traffic acquisition source was, so for example, Google or Facebook or Instagram, wherever, and number two, what country they are coming from, because these will influence your decisions as a website owner to figure out what type of content you are creating. Now, everything I'm doing in this video is 100% free. All you have to do is follow along with G4 and make sure that you have the G4 code active on your website. If you don't yet, I have another video on that and I'll be linking that in the description so y'all can find it really easily. But if you don't have G4 running, it can't track anything and then you won't be able to use this video yet. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Nina Clapperton. I'm the founder of She Knows SEO, and I'm here to help you figure out your website and improve your traffic. You can follow me at SheKnowsSEO.co or by subscribing to this channel and turning on your notifications for my new videos every single Thursday. So to start, you need to be in G4. That's going to be analytics.google.com, and it's the only type of code that you can have at the moment from Google. Universal Analytics has since been retired, so if you are running any sort of Google script, it is going to be G4. You're going to want to make sure that you are logged into the correct account and on the right property, otherwise you're going to be getting the wrong traffic sources. So what we need to do is go over to the sidebar. Over here you'll see reports. It's going to be right under home. If you go over to reports, we are then going to go down to behavior and we're going to click on pages and screens. Pages and screens is literally the screen where you can see every single web page on your site and see its views, which is page views, and the number of users. Now you can customize this if you want to also add in sessions. Personally, I don't really care about total number of sessions here. I much more care about page views. And this is going to allow me to see all of the page views on my website. But we have to make a couple changes to make this more usable for ourselves. So first it says rows per page is 10. I want to up that number one, because I don't like that the um, change between pages above the graph here, I'd much prefer it at the bottom, but also because I know I have more than 10 posts and it's easier to see multiples at a glance. So I usually pop, bump this up to about a hundred, but you can change it as you wish. And when you scroll down now, you'll see all of the URLs on your website and the number of page views for whatever period we're working with. So you can also then filter the period. Typically we operate within a 30 day period when we're looking at our analytics. So I'm going to click on, you just click on it up here and change it over to last 30 days and click apply. And you'll see that it minorly changes it, but it ups it a little bit. Now, if we want to also figure out some extra information, such as what country these people came from, or if we want to figure out what traffic source they came from, what we need to do is come down beside the word page path and screen class and click on this little plus icon. This is going to allow us to add an extra filter. So rather than filtering everything and only showing one thing, which you can also do, what I actually want to see here is the kind of related um, extra information within the current chart. We don't necessarily want to like limit the number of things. We want to actually see the geography for everywhere. So I'm going to click on geography and then country, and that's going to give me an idea now of the country for each of these. It's going to reset it. So you will see that we get a lot more rows per page because now every URL has multiple versions. So for example, my homepage, you can see here that just slash means it's your homepage. I have United States, but I also have United Kingdom and I have India and I have Canada. So it technically gives it a whole bunch of new locations. This is great. That way I can tell, okay, my top locations as well as my top pages. But if you only want to see stuff from a singular country, you can actually set that if you want to. So we have country here and there's a couple ways you can do this. Number one, you can just filter the country if you want to. So click on the little arrow beside it, and this is going to filter first Z to A, and if we go the other way, A to Z. And then you can scroll down and just look within a single country if you prefer. That's not my preference. What I'd rather do is come up to add filter, and here what I'm gonna do is actually filter by the specific page. So if we scroll, and type it in. So we want landing page plus query string. 
we want contains, and then we're gonna pop in whatever post we're looking for. So we're gonna just copy that URL, like kind of string at the back there, and then paste it here. We wanna make sure it contains because we want any version of this URL, including if it has Facebook, like kind of UTMs at the end or a newsletter traffic marker to say where it came from. We want all of those. So now we're gonna click apply, and this is going to filter so you can see we only have those URLs there. So I'm gonna get rid of the country filter and go back to filtering by views, and that's going to take us from the highest to lowest views. So here I can see, okay, for this specific blog post, um, I have the most views from the US, then India, then Pakistan, then the United Kingdom, then Germany, then Canada. So now I'm able to actually tell, okay, where is this blog post most popular? And that can help me a lot with figuring out who my primary traffic source is um, in terms of like geography or figuring out, okay, the US likes these posts most. So I'm gonna write more of those posts because the RPMs for the US are the highest. So that is a simple and easy way to filter by country. Now, if you also wanna figure out your traffic acquisition instead of just country acquisition, there is another spot you can do this. If you go over to acquisition on the side and click traffic acquisition, that is going to take us to a screen that just gives us kind of an overview of, okay, organic search, we have 8,731 users and we have 12,002 um, sessions. Is that really helpful? Not really, because I don't know which post those are coming from. So back in pages and screens, we can similarly filter this the way that we filtered by country. So beside that page path and screen class, we're gonna click the little plus icon again, and this time we're gonna go by traffic source. Once you're in traffic source, we're then gonna click onto cross channel, and here we want sor session source slash medium. And what that's gonna do is populate where these things came from. And what I like here is that it's not just, okay, it's organic, it's that it's Google and it's organic. So I get more information on where people are coming from. So here you can see that my top things are all Google, except for like direct to my homepage, and that's all organic. Now, if you have Google and you also run Google ads, this is why we want that organic marker of, is this organic or did you pay for this? I'm gonna increase my rows to 100 again, just like we did last time. That way we can get a few more. Now this site, I really do focus on organic search, but you can also see I have like Get Serious About Sales, which was a summit I was in, and that's referral traffic. Then I have another summit that I was in, uh, and then again, referral traffic. So you can see how it shifts a little bit based on what these things are. Um, and if I paid for ads I don't on this website, I would be able to tell, okay, did Nina pay for ads to get people here? Or was this organic? Or was this referral traffic? Where did this come from? So that gives me a lot of ability to understand where people are coming to my site from to focus my marketing efforts more on that platform or to figure out, okay, I'm not using that platform. Maybe I should because I'm not doing as well as I'd like to there. Or I need to change my strategies on that platform because it's not working. And the ways that we would filter this, again, we can filter it um, by that landing query and string, just like we did last time. Up at the top, we would add the filter, put in the URL, and then filter for that specific URL. Or we can also filter by session source if we only want to see the ones that are from Google or the ones that are from Facebook. You can also with the add filter, and you can technically do this for geography too, but it's a little bit less helpful, I would say. Um, over here, we're just going to scroll down to almost the bottom, so under, what's the heading? Traffic source, we're gonna scroll to uh, session source slash medium, and then you're gonna select whichever one. So you can either have contains, and then if you put in Google, it's gonna have the Google direct and organic, or you would do exactly matches, and then you know it's Google slash organic, so whatever you prefer. For my case, let's just do Facebook actually, and see what Facebook does for me. And then we're going to click apply. And here you can see it's changed it. So now you can see all of my Facebook referrals here um, and which posts are doing the best from Facebook. So this gives me an idea also of the type of content to focus on for that specific platform. A lot of people right now are really focused on Facebook page traffic or Pinterest traffic. Sometimes the posts that are doing well on a certain traffic acquisition source are going to be different. And that's because like they have different algorithms. So you're gonna have different things perform better. And this can help me figure out, okay, the things that are currently doing best um, on my Facebook are really about ad revenue or affiliate revenue and are very revenue based. So I wanna do more revenue based content for them. 
but maybe on for SEO, we saw that with Google, it's doing better with more informational content. So the information seemed to be more like SEO and keyword based. Okay, now I know that whichever traffic source I'm leaning into, I'm gonna write content that is specifically applicable to that traffic source. And that's why it's really important to have this data so we are able to make sure we are making the best marketing strategy decisions for our website. There you have it. That's how you're gonna figure out the page views on your website to specific blog posts and figure out the traffic acquisition source and the location source for your audience. This is really gonna help you make decisions based on like the type of content you should be creating for different traffic channels and for different locations. For example, if you wanna target more people in the US, look at what's performing best in the US and write more of that. For example, if you wanna do better on Facebook, look at your content that is performing the best on Facebook and write more of that. This is why first party data is so important and so empowering for marketers. So I really recommend, even if you struggle with G4, have the code on and be able to understand even just these basic reports. Realistically, this is all you need to understand to be able to make really good decisions for your strategies for your website. Now, if like me, you do prefer universal analytics, unfortunately that was sunsetted in July of 2023, but we can actually change around some of our reports in G4 to look a lot more like Universal Analytics. This is 100% free to do, and it's actually more simple than you would expect. So I have a video on screen right now that's gonna help you be able to do that. It is a complete tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions so that you can turn your G4 dashboard into Universal Analytics reports so we get all of the data we used to get and it's a little bit easier. It's also gonna show you how to turn your preview section on the homepage to actually show you not just users, but sessions and page views at a glance. So if like many people, you are on track for Mediavine or Raptive ad networks where you need to track those certain metrics, you'll be able to see them at a glance a lot easier. Now, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and get notified for my next video coming next Thursday. Hope you guys have a great day, bye.